this is room C. Welcome to room C. We are going to go ahead and get started with our first speaker, who is talking about agile data visualization with Dash Builder. Can I ask you to start by introducing yourself? Hello, good morning, buenos dias. My name is William. I'm from Brazil. I'm a software engineer working at Red Hat. So that's basically it. I love open source and open data. So I'm really glad to be here, and thank you for being here as well. So, yeah, so today what, I'm, what I wanted to share with you is my experience going from big uh, open data systems to small and agile data systems with these two that I work with called Dash Builder. So to, start, to get started, let me give you some context. Uh, we have an open data group in my city where we try to do as some of you uh, probably do as well which is basically go to the government sites and grab data and put it in a format that machines can read. And then we create visualizations or systems using this data. And at the beginning, we have you know, big systems, like we have backend, so have applications, and it was relying on a lot of code. So it was, uh, since we are a small group, it was hard for us to maintain the code because we have no funding, we do everything in our free time. So yeah, so it was, it was really great. We, we created some big things. Uh, for example, this system, Repassi, it's a big system that scans um, the government, the federal government money that's given to the cities. And we built some visualizations to show how much the city is depending on the federal government. And, but it was a very big system and hard to maintain. And we, ha we had also this system on the right here, which is uh, a, it, wa it was an easy way to search laws in our city. And we use NLP to uh, put some tags on the laws to make it easier to find some law. Yeah, it was all great, but it was really hard to maintain. So our problem was that, and it used it used it to take like one to two weeks to put on air, so it was very slow to deliver things to the citizen. So today we change our approach. I'm just so today um, we we deliver faster dashboards, small visualizations or small applications directed to the what people ask us. Uh, for example, mm, last month we had a neighborhood in my city that were suffering with flooding, and they wanted to know if the local government was doing something to help them. And we scanned the data and quickly created a dashboard so they could see uh, everything that was done for their neighborhood in the last few years. So it took like uh, one to two hours to build the dashboard they put online and send to them to see this information. And how we did that? So we use a dash builder. I know that there are other tools in the market that uh, probably could achieve the same, the same goal. But with Dash Builder, we uh, is the tool that I also work at Red Hat. I am one of the developers of Dash Builder. But one great thing about Dash Builder is that it's a really free open source, free. Um, it's software livre. So it's very good, you do not have to pay, and the license is very good. You can put in your application, you do not have you know, to give um, information to anyone to use. You just pull the, pa the package and start using. And all the dashboard definitions is using pure text, so we don't have to um, go to some proprietary format, which was all something that we wanted. And being text-based, it is to reuse. Because, for example, if you want to do some data visualization, you can recall that you did it before, so you can copy the code and use in another data visualization with different uh, data sets. And it's also easy to consume in JSON file, CSV, and also the metrics format. Because, you know, Prometheus is a, a time series database and to read data, it reads from a matrix format, and this format is supported by Dash Builder as well. And another good thing is that to transform the data is very easy. So you just have to declare if you want to group, if you want to filter, or if you want to slice the data. It's just like two to four lines of code, YML code, and then you have the format that you want. 
we don't have to install anything, and it's all client side. So all that thing that I said about backend, it's not anymore here. You just have to put the data somewhere that is accessible, and we can build data visualization with that. So. How we do this? Basically, um, we start creating our data set. Uh, the data set is the core concept of Dash Builder. And data sets can come, as I said, from JSON or CSVs. And, and then we can also declare inside the YML. So we have here, I don't have to do this, so I have this sophisticated stuff here. <laughs> so we have here uh, a new data set. I can put the content here, and then I can declare the visual part. So here I have uh, A, 2, B, 3. If I want to visualize in bar chart, I just say that I want to put a bar chart here, and I say where is the data set, and it creates a visual visualization. And uh, as I said, any accessible URL will work, and we can cache the data. So this is very important. So if you have a big JSON, you can load entirely in the memory, and then Dash Builder will work entirely offline. So it just need, need is one request to get the data, and it works in the browser. Another good thing is that we can transform JSON. So in this site here, Economia Popular, they are putting together a lot of metrics, economic metrics about Brazil. And, but the format is not compatible with Dash Builder. Let me just go back again. So Dash Builder accepts data in a 2G JSON array. So the data must be in this format here. But as you know, most of the time the data will be in another format. So Dash Builder supports this great tool, JSON ATA, where we can transform the JSON and grab the, the, um, the format that we need in Dash Builder. So then, using point to that URL, we put the expression. In this case here, I had to change this column, the first column, the year, because it was understand the color as a number. So I had to make sure that it was a label. Then I can visualize any way I want. So when you are building visualization, we'll talk more about this. Basically, you just declare what kind of visualization you want, you do some configuration, and then put the data set, and everything usually works. Sometimes it, didn't, it doesn't work, but <laughs> But easily it works. So uh, having the data set, then you, you can display the data any way you want, as I said. So Dash Builder provides you things like uh, the full charts. And the way that these charts are put in the page is by having this concept of displayer, which is a block of the page that visualizes a part of the data set. So imagine that you have the data set. It can be a big data set, but you want, for example, to group by some column you can build what we call lookup, which is just basically an operation over the data set. And then the displayer will render the data set on the page. Um, we have a lot of displays that are ready for use. And um, usually they are compatible with the data sets. You just provide a category and a value, and then uh, everything, should, everything works. So, I said page, so we can have multiple pages and have like um, a way to navigate between pages. So I, I can have really big YMLs and then have a lot of pages and then organize them with navigation. And one other good thing about Dash Builder is that if you don't like the visualization, if, if you have some tool that you, you use in your company or any other chart library, you can create your own visualization. In this case here, this part of this small dashboard is all we did with JavaScript. So we use Dash Builder um, built-in components, but we could add some of our own components here. And if you need a backend, Dash Builder has a Quarks extension. Is anyone here a Java programmer? No? It's hard to find Java programmer in the, in the uh, conference. I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> because usually people like Python, so I, 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 um, I'm always the exception because I, I love Java and, and we have this tool called Quarkus. You can use Kotlin. Do you know Kotlin? Okay, so it's a little better than Java <laughs> at least. <laughs> so you can use Kotlin with Quarkus and, to, and put your dashboards with a backend. So it's really easy to use a backend when you integrate with this tool. 
And how do you do the actual development? So you can start with any text editor, write your YML, and then put with Dash Builder. It's all in our documentation, dashbuilder.org. But then, or you can just go to this URL here and start developing your dashboard. And then when you finish your dashboard, you click here, and it will be on OpenShift. But you don't have to do that. You can use any stacked provider to put your dashboard. So for example, GitHub pages. How many of you have used a GitHub page? It's very good, right? It's because you, you develop, you commit, and then everything is online. So dashboard can be used with GitHub pages. And the data set, as I said, uh, you declare, sorry, the dashboard, you just declare the data set, you can declare the columns if you don't do this dashboard, try to guess what are the columns of your data set. Then you create the visualization. In this case, I put here a bar chart. But you can also put components that will filter uh, other components. So for example, here I put a selector. And then when I click on this button here, this chart is filtered. So it's all for free. So this was something that we wanted. We didn't want to go over all again to do, you know, the JavaScript and Java development to grab data and go row by row and filter and then update visualization. We didn't want to deal with this uh, from time to time. We just want this to work. And that should be the provided this because it's all built in. And as I said, you can um, provide the dashboard using OpenShift. Just click on that button that I show, and uh, it will require you to log in into online OpenShift. But then you don't have to be with that. You, you can use um, GitHub pages. I have a video here where I go through throughout the process. But in this post here, uh, it's all described as well. Or you can just use this NPM package bring the dashboard into your application, and then unpack, and then use there as part of your application. So if you want to get started, you don't have to know, you don't have to read a manual. We have a, a lot of samples to get started. So you can, for example, grab one of these dashboards, just change some things, and it, it will work. As I said, we reuse a lot of code. So Sometimes when we have some requirement, we just copy our old dashboards and change some things and it's working. So I have a lot of open data samples here. I hope to go through some of them. And just to, to, to finish, so one great thing about Dash Builder, you don't have to install anything. So this is one of the great strengths of using Dash Builder. And everything that you, you probably need is there, so you don't have to uh, do any development to build small visualizations, simple visualizations. It's really easy to reuse dashboards in YML format. And um, it's great to consume different JSON formats. So don't have to adapt your data of source to the dashboard. Usually you, don't, you, just, you do not have to touch your uh, source of data. Because you know, one hard part of building open data um, is that usually you have to go through scrapping and then format the data to put in the format that you use. With Dash Builder, that was really easier for us. And easy to deploy. So usually you just have to um, click and everything will be ready. For example, the, the site with open data, we import into that online tool, wedge, save, and then it's published. So it's all in the browser. So let me move, let me move on to some coding. I forgot. Uh, so these are our dashboards, all YML based. Uh, do you know what happened in Brazil on January 8th, right? So at that time, a lot of people invaded the Congress and it was a really sad day for us. But basically, uh, they published, some people were arrested, and they published the data in, in the news about the age of the people that are arrested, arrested. So one thing that we did was to find the median age. So look at this. The median age is, uh, is not to know crazy teenagers invaded the Congress. <laughs> so they were mostly um, 
senior people that in anyway so it was very intense because we built this it came to the news we built like 10 minutes and posted in some groups some whatsapp groups and also in the internet and this became you know well known that the age was different from what we are used to 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 do there was one woman arrested with 73 years and this was done, we didn't have to treat the data, we just copied the data and everything, you know, we just copy inside the YML and build the visualization. We didn't have to uh, put the data somewhere, it was all inside the YML. So other thing that we had in Brazil was this thing called secret budget where the money from the federal government was going to the seats, but we didn't know how much money was going in or what was happening and who was giving the money to the cities. And it was really bad, really bad because without the transparency, we couldn't find um, what was going on. So a friend of mine did all the all the um, scrapping of data and we create this, this visualization in like one to two hours. It is, big, it is a big visualization. So we have a lot of dimensions and integration with other dashboards. But a good thing is that some journalists ask us to modify this to get the information that they wanted and we could modify in GitHub, save, and it was ready for them like in two to three minutes. So it was really good to uh, do a development close to who was interested in the data. So let me go back to the slides. So yeah, so that's it. So if we have any questions, we'll be around. I don't know if we have time. Yeah. Uh, so we have five minutes for questions. And that's basically about the builder. Thank you so much, William, for that great talk. I'd love to see live coding or some dashboards. We have time for questions, and we could do questions in English or Spanish. Does anyone have a question? Um, you Let's use this, please. What does the back end do if you Use the, you mentioned there was a Java-based back end. What would that be for? Yeah, so let's say that you want to access some some specific system that is not accessible from from the browser, usually cars issue. <laughs> because uh, when you are running the browser, it's hard to reach certain URLs. You may have some authentication that's not supported by the browser. For example, we'll be the dashboard where we had to get the token from a service, and we could do this in the browser, so we put, put a backend. So backend is usually to uh, strange authentication schemas, or if you have to access a very specific system, like a mainframe or something like that. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, you gave two examples where you talked about how quickly you were able to build these dashboards. What is like the fastest one that you've ever built? I can show you now. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> so as I said, you go to this URL. I think one open here. So this is our online editor. So you can develop on the left side. You do the YML here. And then you click on this little eye. You can visualize what you just did, and this is a simple application that explores all the Dash Builder components. So let me create a new one. So uh, you go to the home page, click on New Dashboard. So you have one sample for free, but that's shit. So let me start <laughs> one from scratch.
So here's the data set. <laughs> So that's basically it. So you good? Uh, <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs>